Stillwater's Morning Scramble. It is Wellness Wednesday. Scott Petty is in the house. Good morning. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Not always on a Wednesday, but a lot of times. We've been talking every week, I think, for about two, two and a half months. Now. Man, yeah. it's uh, it's. uh I'm surprised you're still talking to me. I learn every, every Invite day. Invite me in. Sometimes we even <laughs> correspond during the week. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> no, only once, I think. Yeah. I think I only Not once. at me, right? Oh, no, I wasn't angry at you at all. <laughs> I just, I had seen something, which we've all been a witness to things that uh, frustrate us from time to time, and yeah. I knew that I could cry on Scott Petty's shoulder that day. <laughs> and so I go, we bounce seen things, this? We bounce things off of each other from time to time. Uh, 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 yeah, and that's good. Yeah, You need absolutely. to have that safety net. Absolutely. And speaking of which, Joni O'Neill is on, and uh, I mean, she's going to be a regular once a month, I think, on this show. With yeah, Tony. yeah. And I was excited to hear that. Good morning, Joni. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. Good morning, Joni. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Fantastic. How about you? Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. You know, there's something that there. I can think of two guests. Now, I have a, I have the best guest, and so I shouldn't point just two out. <laughs> but that that uh, times, and I don't have them on as regularly. But every time I have them on, I'm in a much better mood when they, you know, after the yeah. interview, they made me feel better. That's, one of them is Joni O'Neill, yeah. and the other one is Calvin Miller. Yes. Well, thanks. That makes me feel so happy, and even makes me more excited than I already am. There I you go. Possible. They're both two uplifting folks. They That's are. For darn sure. They are. Yeah, and, yeah. and it also make you think. Yep. Which we all need to do that. Yep. And when Joni's been on them before, I think you've listened to the interviews. Maybe you haven't been yeah. on, I don't yep. think, with her. But we've talked about our sleeping problems. Yeah. Uh, exercise problems. How we can. Mental wellness. Yeah. A big thing with, with when we couldn't get out of the house or we didn't think we could. Mm -hmm. How can we still say, stay in shape? And today you had a, a few of those topics. And one was. Our eating, which we all have to think about, and, and that was one of the topics you wanted to focus on today. Yes, I did. I mean, right now with so many people being home or at work or under stress, one of the things that we all use as a as a tool is eating. Eating, overeating, um, it is an issue that I think so many people have on their minds. There are so many diets out there. There are so many... Um, different types of information coming at you that I think it's really important that sometimes we just stop and think. You mentioned thoughts. That's one of my favorite things is that we take time to think about um, all of these different aspects of wellness. Yeah, the one thing you said a few weeks ago, and you said, this sounds silly, but think about what we're thinking. Yeah. And it, and it may sound odd at first, but that's a great thought. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. So if I may, um, diet. Um, you know, what does the word diet mean for us, for everybody? Truly, it is just a way of eating, but we attach it to all of these different things. And so if we're thinking about thoughts, one of the things to ask ourselves is, why are we eating? Are we bored? Is that one of the things? Because sometimes when I eat, it may be because I'm bored. Sure. There are two reasons why we eat, um, if you break it down. One is that either we're hungry or two, we just want to eat. <laughs> so trying to figure out the difference between hunger and desire for food is one of the hardest things possible. And well, the reason that it's so hard is because most of us don't even know what hungry feels like. Oh, you good know, point. We, um, good point. We, we don't let ourselves get hungry. And in some cases, if we're people that eat a lot of sugar and flour, our neurotransmitters are kind of thrown off. So we have a couple of neurotransmitters that tell our bodies when we're hungry and when we're full. They're called ghrelin and leptin. And some of the processed foods that we eat kind of throw those neurotransmitters out of whack. So we don't necessarily know that we're hungry or we're actually just wanting more of those things, sugar and flour, because they cause us to want more. So that's sort of a desire, not necessarily a hunger. So it's kind of confusing. Yeah, Scott had a question. Well, no, I was just going to say it, or or it's that time of day. If this is when I should eat. It's it's you may not really be hungry, but right. you may think, well, this is when I should eat. And uh, it's it's like, you know, I'll be in a meeting somewhere and they'll have dessert, and I'll look at that dessert and I'll think. Well, they brought that dessert as part of this meal. I should have a pee. <laughs> you yeah. know? Right, right. I, I never right. have. I should right. never have dessert for lunch. I mean, it just doesn't <laughs> seem right. But when it's there, by golly, I'm going to enjoy it. And food is also part of our social existence. 
you know, if Absolutely. you're if you're at a place that's got a Super Bowl party or whatever, there's food nonstop. Yeah. You know, in the press room at uh, Boone Pickens Stadium, they they have a meal beforehand. Yeah. You go up yeah. and you, I, I do the pregame show. You get, you go get a meal, and then they bring stuff out. Yeah. For you to graze <laughs> for three hours. Right. And so the question to ask yourself then is, what is normal? Why is normal normal? And do I want to be normal when it comes to food? Because I think we're great. all under this misconception that we should be able to eat anything we want, anytime we want, and be the weight we want. <laughs> yeah. And and the facts are that's just not not the truth, and that's not normal. And so when I mentioned diets at the top of this, um, we all have this I, not well, most of us have this idea that diets are temporary, that we're going to go on a diet, we're going to lose weight. And when I'm talking about diets, I'm not talking about crazy diets. Right. I'm talking about sensible, um, nutrition sound diet. But when we go on these diets, we do lose weight and we do feel good and we do have energy. But what happens is we, you know, think of that as temporary. So we go off of it and then we gain weight. And then we say the diet didn't work, when in truth, the diet did work as long as we're on it. Yeah. So the, the, my, my offering to people uh, as something to consider is to not restrict yourself or consider it a restriction, but list all of the foods that you love that are good for you. you know, take a sheet of paper, a blank sheet of paper, list every single food that you absolutely love to eat that you know is good for you. And try for uh, whatever a determined amount of time to eat only those foods. You know, so you're not really restricted, like I can only eat it this time, I can only eat this food, but you can eat as much of these foods as you want until you're full. So it's mm-hmm. not really a diet per se that, you know, you have to do this or that or the other. You're just making healthy food choices most of the time. You know, you mentioned the fact that uh, we think it's temporary, and I'm sure, and you know much more about this than I ever do. I wonder if sometimes we just don't get, well, okay, I'm tired of this. I try, you know, we've been doing this a long time, which is a fear we have with the virus, for example. There's mm-hmm. the fact that we've done this for a long time. We've had pretty good results. <sighs> it's time to get back to. Yeah, I'm done with that. To the, my bucket of chicken, though, right? <laughs> I'm tired of the virus now. Right. Yeah. And, and so is there a fear of that also? We just get restless and go, okay. You know, because being disciplined is hard for all of us. Well, our our brains, they, they do whatever we tell them to do. And our brains like to be efficient. And they do what they're comfortable with and they know. And so if our normal is eating a bucket of chicken and that's what we're comfortable with and what we know and makes us feel good, that's what our brain wants to do. So it's much easier just to go with what we know. We don't have to think about it. The thing about eating a particular diet or whatever you know that diet looks like it it causes awareness and we have to think about it and just like you said we get tired of thinking about it but if you do it long enough then it becomes a routine just like anything else just like any skill that you learn you have to practice until it becomes second nature and that's the same way with eating you know it becomes a way um, that is normal for you and so scott it would be easier on a, an afternoon meeting to say, oh, I don't really want, that's not normal for me. And ask yourself, am I hungry? Right. Am I really hungry? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or do I just want that because it's there and everybody else? Well, there's also that. the, uh, almost the, it's not meant peer pressure, but if you come out and go, have you had this chocolate stuff? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. That's right. I, wow, I mean, you've got to have a try this. And then you're yeah. not going to say, you know, I'm not hungry. And yeah. then they say, and so some of it is just, um, you're, you're lured into it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the right way to put that. But Well, it is. And you know what's interesting? It's perfectly okay and socially acceptable for me to say to you, well, Scott, why, um, why aren't you having some of this? This is great, um, this cake. But it's not acceptable for me to say, Scott, why are you having two or three or four pieces of cake? <laughs> right. right. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind point. of... Um, it's an unfair, unfair, it's unfair to those that are trying to make changes, yeah. but that's the norm. Yeah. And one thing I would like to offer um, for people to consider, um, you know, we all talk about processed foods and um, how bad they are for us in various different ways. But I heard something the other day that really resonated and clicked and made sense to me. Um, processed foods 
are basically, you know, foods that have been condensed down to something. So, for example, sugarcane is condensed to granules. You know, wheat is condensed to a white flour. Um, what has happened is that when that process occurs, our bodies don't have the ability to register those calories. So, you know, if we ate a whole stick of sugar cane, we would be full. But if you eat the result of that sugar cane, which is however many teaspoons or tablespoons of sugar, your body doesn't recognize it as calories, so you're still hungry. You don't get that satiated feeling. And the same if you think about things like soda. Yeah. You can drink a soda that, say, may have 300 calories, but your body doesn't even recognize it because it's not a food. There's no, um, there's no fiber. There's no other things that make your body say, oh, be hungry. So that's why processed foods, one of the reasons why they're, they're so hard um, for us to lose weight or to stay you know, at whatever size we want to be because they trick us. You know, you made that, that connection, or I'm, I'm making a connection here also in my mind. Like this morning, I, I like to stop by and see my friend Lance at the on cue at Western and 51. You know, oh, I love Lance and his wife, Helen, too. It, yes. And I, and I stop in and I say, hey, good morning, you know, and I, and I get my Diet Coke. And, and I don't do it every morning. But I've been in my mind, I've been thinking, I need to stop drinking that Diet Coke. I have heard it's not good for me. I, I don't need one in the morning. I, I drink a lot of water and I, I, you know, I like water, but I also like a Diet Coke. And so this morning, stop by, I'm running ahead of time. So I stop by, I see Lance. It's only 64 ounces, the one you brought in here. So. <laughs> it's not either. <laughs> no, it's but, not. It's not. But... But I know it's it's bad for me. I like that social interaction with Lance. I guess I just need to start going in and buying a bottle of water and saying, "Hey, Lance," <laughs> you know. But but that's that's that social thing that uh, that I enjoy. And and he's such an uplifting guy, and he served our country in the military. And it's just one of those one of those things that it kind of feeds me in a different way. But then I get my diet coke. I don't need that diet coke, but I need to say hi to Lance. You know. Right. So, right. Well, let me offer you this. Um, and, and for everybody, it's not that you have to do or eat or drink or whatever. The idea is, and Steve and I love this idea, is back to our thoughts. Just be um, cognizant of what you're doing and why you're doing it, and then choosing to do it consciously. Um, and when you do that, it relieves some of the pressure. So yes, I know this Diet Coke's not good for me, but today I'm going to do it because, you know, X, Y, Z. And so instead of just doing it mindlessly, um, recognize when you're doing it, recognize you're making that choice, and then it just gives you more power because we are in control of all of our thoughts, and it's, it's very powerful. It takes away some of the... Um, victimization or yeah. powerlessness from being in environments that we feel like cause us to overeat. Yeah. So think what you think. Yeah. Yeah. Think yeah. about what you think. You know, the one thing that's going to come out of this, I think, is we're going to see very few buffets. Yeah. Which is probably yeah. a good thing. Which is probably a good thing. And, and they right. were, they, we were starting to scale back on those because mm -hmm. there's so much wasted food anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a few that were still thriving, Golden yep. Corral and stuff yep. like that. But yep. But most of the ones, the Western Sizzlers of the world, I think, have kind of gone the wayside because it's so expensive. They were wasting a lot of food. Right. And I saw, I was at a rib crib here the other day picking up, take out. Diet I Coke. saw a sign that said, what? Diet Coke. In there. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get a Diet Coke. But, but, I, but I, I noticed a sign that said, I think it was rib crib, that said, you know, we're, we're, we're we, I think we are not, we are no longer doing the all you can eat ribs, you know, and, yeah. and part of that is probably because like you said, the, the prices of beef have gone up so much, but, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I think that you're going to see buffets, um, limited. That's going to be interesting for those restaurants that live on buffets. Where know, we that, share food lines and stuff like right, that. Right. So, so, Hey, I'm going to get a break in here and, and then we'll, uh, retackle some of these, but anything else we want to talk about food and diet? And I, I think what I took from that was use common sense. Don't just keep going because you always have in the past. And I really related to what you were saying about the time of day, Scott. Mm -hmm. I've taken where we've had different families on a big vacation. 
and especially different generations. Well, if it gets near the noon hour, this is when you eat. That's when right. You go, we ate breakfast at nine thirty. We don't <laughs> right. need to eat right, right. now. Right. Yeah, that's right. I think everybody's done that, right? Well, yeah. it's time for lunch. Absolutely. And it's like, but no one's hungry, but still we ate. Yep. Right. Yep. Well, or or if you are traveling like that, you got to stop because there's not another restaurant for sixty miles, or yeah. you know, or, or, or how how far to what's going to be open at the airport. Right. And so you time all these things, and you. Airport world gets you all off. Yeah, whether exactly. it's food or alcohol or whatever, it throws uh -huh. everything off. Right? Yeah. So, but uh, anything we missed with the food conversation? Um, I don't think so. I would just leave people with the food questions as: Am I really hungry, um, or great. do I just want it? And uh, and you know, there's nothing wrong with allowing yourself to get hungry, so you can actually recognize what hunger feels like and rate it on a scale of one to ten, and decide hmm. for you when you need to eat, our bodies are incredible machines and they have all kinds of signals that tell us when we're hungry and when we're not hungry. It's just allowing them to do that. Um, and maybe some people need to recalibrate by, you know, changing up their diet a little bit. Great um, advice. Well yeah. said. Hey, we'll take a time out. We're back with uh, Joni O'Neill with Total Health and Scott Petty with Stillwater Medical Center. This is Stillwater's Morning Scramble.